a warning about a very effective painkiller that has a rare but alarming side effect. Yes, this painkiller and others like it are in such demand that they've set off a crime wave. You will see it happening now as video cameras capture street thugs desperate to get their hands on a supply. Jim Avila heads up our investigation. They are the new pocket gold, pain pill, so valuable to drug dealers, the neighborhood prescription counter is now the target of routine holdups. Surveillance videos from across the country catch masked bandits chasing pharmacists out of the store, jumping over counters, not for the register cash, but for Percocet, Oxycontin, and a new favorite, methadone. That's what this gun-toting robber demands. After a pharmacist throws her bottles of methadone, she runs out of the store to either take the pills herself or sell them on the street. No matter how it is acquired, illegally or by prescription, methadone is now the leading drug killer in many states. In North Carolina alone, the deaths have grown 50 times in recent years, skyrocketing to more than one death every other day. I love you, Michael. I miss you so much. I just know there's a <laughs> Michael Houston was active in church youth groups. He played guitar and baseball, had an after-school job and a girlfriend. <laughs> Too many activities on his plate, say his parents, to be a drug abuser. But he'd been sick. He had been very congested and was not sleeping well at night. Someone may have told him, take this, this will help you rest. You'll get a good night's sleep. Our son, he comes home from work one evening. He goes to sleep around 10.30 and he doesn't wake up on Tuesday morning. He laid in the hospital on a breathing machine for a day and a half and there were thousands and thousands of people at that hospital praying for him every day. And it just, he just didn't wake up. The autopsy showed there were no other drugs in the system? They surmise it was no more than 10 or 15 milligrams of methadone. There was one pill in his system and that was all. This is methadone used not in its traditional liquid form by heroin addicts trying to kick the habit, but as a cheap pain pill sold for as little as 25 cents a pill. Autopsy reports show even people with legitimate pain with real prescriptions and real doctors can die from methadone poisoning. That's scary. The Houstons are not alone in their sorrow. This group of North Carolinians all lost a loved one to an accidental methadone overdose. I'll be honest, I never heard of it. Eddie Ellis's brother William died within a week of starting his new prescription. Linda Simmons didn't realize her daughter Rhonda, a 34-year-old nurse, was taking methadone for a bad back. So what does that tell you and tell us? That even educated people don't understand the devastation this drug can cause. One pill can be lethal. Dr. Lynn Webster analyzed methadone deaths nationally and says the main problem is with new users. The drug doesn't kick in right away, tempting overdose. Often it has to be started at a rate that's not adequate to cover the pain. So Webster says doctors need to strongly warn patients not to chase pain with more drug. Or if a doctor prescribes too much medicine, you may not wake up two to three days after you start your prescription. Not wake up, as in die. die. Yes. That's exactly what happened to Robert Cranin, an electrician with severe migraine headaches. His wife, Darla Lou, says Robert took methadone as prescribed, and he died anyway, four days after starting the medication. After he passed away, I counted the days and counted the pills. He had taken the proper amount that was prescribed to him. Here's a guy who took what he was supposed to take, ordered by a doctor, and he dies. It's hard to take. He shouldn't have died. In fact, Dr. Ruth Winokur, chief toxicologist for the North Carolina Medical Examiner's Office, says methadone is so cheap, insurance companies promote its use. And often doctors wrongly prescribe methadone for temporary pain such as migraine headaches or menstrual cramps. It is, is troubling. Like, no one likes to think that their doctor is going to prescribe them something that they shouldn't take. Methadone is a nighttime killer. All the victims died while sleeping. Sadly, Rhonda was found by her nine-year-old son. And methadone does give one big warning that death is near. Were there any signs that you might want to warn other people about? 
Terry woke up in the middle of the night and did hear him snoring um, quite loudly. We see this constantly in tons and tons of cases that, you know, across my desk. The patient was snoring, doesn't usually snore, was making gargling sounds. Those are all indications that that patient is toxic. Innocent patients, many never warned on their prescription bottle about the tricky nature of this difficult drug. The problem becomes more explosive when you move from prescription bottle to America's streets. When methadone is sold for recreational use, that's when the cops turn up the heat. In the peaceful, wholesome town of Portage, Wisconsin, we see the other side of prescription pills. A drug war on Main Street. These, police say, are not the innocent. Among those arrested in this raid, videotaped by a joint police and sheriff's task force, one of dozens this year, a nurse, a senior citizen, and this 19-year-old who pled not guilty, and a 42-year-old father. My family needs me. Don't do this to me. 2020 went along on these drug busts to see how methadone has worked its way into middle America. Okay, we're going to 429 East Cook Street do a search warrant, have information they're selling and using methadone. In this middle-class Wisconsin neighborhood, eight officers wearing bulletproof vests and carrying M16s surround a well-kept house where a nursing student with an 11-year-old son is suspected of using and selling pain pills. The detectives wait until the boy has left for school before beginning their assault. Police search warrant! <laughs> Hold the dog, hold the dog, hold the dog. Hold the dog. Come on out. 28-year-old Haley Stoltz, shaken and sobbing, tells the police she has done nothing wrong. Okay. We don't sell anything. The only thing that I do have is my prescription pills for oh. methadone, and I need that. So you have some methadone in the house? Okay. And where's that from? <laughs> the pain clinic. I don't buy it off the street. I get it from a doctor. Stoltz tells Detective Roger Bradner she's a veteran user, taking six to eight pills a day for pain. Often methadone abusers start out with legitimate prescriptions, but become addicted. Stoltz says she doesn't sell to cover her habit, but knows others do. Just everybody sells them to make money. It's a fast, quick, cheap buzz. A euphoria like heroin and just as dangerous. While Detective Bradner interviewed Stoltz, his partners inside the house discovered something that made them question Haley's story several empty methadone bottles, including one filled just three days earlier. We were missing 100 pills in three days. Where are they at? They're out here. I told you they're in my system. No, they're not. Don't take me for dumb. There is no way. I hope somebody out, OK? And Jason. She claims she gave the missing yeah. pills to a friend to help him okay. with his pain. So you tell me what he's doing with these pills. What's the common sense? He's selling them, absolutely. Absolutely. But I know. Well, when you give someone pills and they sell your pills and it traces back to you if someone dies, you know how many years in prison that could be? You do know how many deaths we have in our yes, area. Yes, you know what? Right? Do well, you know about it? Yes, I do. In fact, Wisconsin has seen methadone deaths almost quadruple in four years. I want to go to jail, but I... Haley fears jail time. In hopes of getting a lighter sentence, she agrees to use her own house for a sting. That same day, with hidden police monitors watching. That's Haley sitting down. Try it before you buy it. Immediately after money is exchanged for the drugs, the police ring the doorbell. Twenty-five-year-old oh Don Cooster was charged with drug delivery and possession of drug paraphernalia. She has pled not guilty. And although Haley cooperated by running the sting at her home, she is also charged with drug delivery. Later, I went along on another setup, this one at a local motel. No, no, what you got there? The woman in white is an undercover oh. police detective. The other two are pain pill buyers, the new face of prescription drug abuse. Both have families at home. One's a housewife with a kid about to return from school. What do you want, what do you want, what do you want? I got some percent. I watched with detectives in an adjoining room. She's pretty much decided she wants some pills, I guess. Right. No, you gave him a 20, you only got, you got five there. Once the deal is made... Please! What? Please! What? Please. 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 Get on the pills, your arms up. Hands out to your sides. Joanne Taylor-Millard looks harmless enough. 
an arrest for controlled substance violations. Middle-aged, well-groomed, she takes care of her mother at home. Oh, my God, this is just horrible. My mom's going to have a heart attack. Detective Dan Pianchi works with the task force and says the people he arrests could be your next-door neighbor. With uh, prescription drugs, including methadone, it goes through all ages, all groups of people, rich, poor, young, old. We've arrested 12-year-olds up to 70-year-olds for diverting and selling their methadone. Okay, sir, if you stand up and kneel on the bunk face that way. Well, I've lost a, a lot you know, due to uh, selling methadone. Do they put uh, leg restraints on you? I've lost months of my life being behind bars now. I will get to the rest of my life, I'm going to be a felon. Alex Miller lost a good job, his home and his car. The cops nabbed him at the same time they arrested his methadone supplier, Nancy Williams, a Portage mom who over the years has had many pain pill prescriptions. Now, I realized that I could take less of the methadone and still feel fine. And I also realized that I could make money from it. At the police station, Williams told us she convinced herself she was actually helping her children. Selling the methadone helped me to be able to give my children the Christmas presents they'd ask for every single thing on the list. Like Alex Miller, Williams will spend plenty of time in jail, away from her children, after selling Main Street's drug of choice, the one pill can kill painkiller, methadone. Jim, it almost makes me nervous when we do these crackdown stories because I worry about the unintended consequences. I understand thousands of people in serious pain can't get enough pain medication, people who ought to have it because doctors are making fear-based decisions. They're afraid the DEA will smash into their office, take away their license, that they'll have to pay lawyers. Uh, I worry if I'm sick that I get enough pain medication. Well, there is that toothpaste sort of tube effect where you squeeze here, you crack down on one drug and it bulges over here. And that's what happened in this case with Oxycontin. The DEA cracked down on doctors over prescribing and were watching their prescriptions and cracking down on them. And so they turned to methadone with the insurance companies like because it's cheaper. And so methadone use has exploded, legal methadone use. And what has happened is that doctors who are not used to prescribing this very tricky drug are prescribing it and they don't know how to do it correctly and their patients sometimes make mistakes as well and it's become a real problem. Thank you, Jim Avila.